Welcome to another video. In a previous video, I was accused of performing illegal activities because I obtained zero factorial using the factorial function, which is just not supposed to be used for zero. But I did it anyways, and I was accused of doing illegal stuff. So, I decided to go the legal way today. I am not going to be computing zero factorial, but I'm going to be showing you how the gamma function is obtained. Let's get into the video. Now let's start with something that is a little bit familiar, the Gaussian integral. I'm going to do some modifications to the Gaussian integral and then we're going to go gradually from there into what we're going to achieve. Let's say that we want to play with this. Remember this integral of e to the negative x squared dx. Remember we said that this is going to be the square root of pi. Okay, I have a previous video that shows that. So let's do this. We don't want to take the whole thing because we don't want to deal with negative numbers. Okay, let's just assume we're starting from zero. So we're going halfway from negative infinity to infinity. We're just going to take zero. That means our integral is going to be halfway. This is going to be over two. If we compute this integral. Okay, let's do another modification. This is just a refresher. What if I'm really not interested in this value? I don't want to have x multiplying itself. I want to bring another variable into the picture. So instead of having x times x as the exponent here, I am going to write something else. What if I write t times x? So it is no longer x squared. And that means I can no longer guarantee this because t is not x. I'm just bringing in another thing that is not x. So let's find out what this would be. So now suppose I want to take this integral with respect to x. Now because this is not x, I have to treat t as a constant. Right? Okay. So in treating this as a constant, but this is an improper integral. And remember, when you have improper integrals, you have to rewrite it as a limit. So I like to do things correctly in this video. So what I'm going to do is say that this can be written as the limit. I'm going to replace this with some variable. Let's call it, um, I'll use r, the ver as r goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to r of e to the negative tx dx. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a problem. So can I integrate this? Yes, we know how to integrate e to anything. You just need to use u substitution. You're going to get minus t, and then you use it to divide what you get, right? That's how you do integration. So we can say this is equal to um, the limit as r goes to infinity uh, if we integrate this, it's going to be negative 1 over t is going to be the constant. And the answer we're going to get is still going to be e to the negative tx. But we now need to evaluate from 0 to r. So this is going to be equal to um, the limit as r goes to infinity of negative 1. You don't need to bother about this because we're integrating, we're evaluating just the x, okay? Negative 1 over t, and then what do we have here? We're going to have, now if we put r here, this is going to be 1 over e to the rt, like that, minus this is going to be, if you put 0 here, it's going to be 1 over e to the 0, which is just e to the 0. Okay, we don't need to put minus. Well, what does that mean? If you take this limit, as r goes to infinity, this becomes so big that this becomes 0, and this is 1. So we have negative 1 over t multiplied 
by 0 minus 1. And what does that give us? This is 0. This is just 1 over t, right? Plus 1 over t. That the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx dx is equal to 1 over t. Nice. So it's no longer pi over the square root of pi over 2 like we said before because um, it's no longer x and x. Now, what can we do with this? Let's play. Suppose I want to differentiate this now. Remember your fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Yes. So let's try to apply that here. Let's differentiate both sides with respect to t now, not with respect to x. Okay, if I try to differentiate this, I'm going to say that d dt, that's with respect to t of this integral from 0 to infinity, um, they're going inside each other. That's not okay. d dt of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx dx is going to be the derivative of this also, d dt. I'll write it as t to the negative 1. So how do you differentiate this? Remember that if what was on top here was a function of t, all you have to do is take that function of t and use it to replace x. But we got t in here, so we can't do that because this is not a function. But you see, there was someone who did all the work for us. Okay, did all the work, you don't need to think about anything. Leibniz, it's called Leibniz integral rule. It states that if you want to take the derivative of a multivariable function under an integral sign with respect to just one of the variables, you might as well take the partial derivative by moving the operator inside, but it's now a partial derivative with respect to that variable you're talking about. And that's all we need here. Now, the proof of that you can find on Encyclopedia if you're interested. And it's just a little bit more complicated and I don't want to spend time trying to show that here. Yeah, so that's how this goes in here. So you can rewrite this as the integral from zero to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to t of e to the negative t x dx. And that's going to be equal to this, this one we know how to integrate, right? Everybody knows how to integrate this. If you integrate this, I mean, how to differentiate this rather, if you differentiate the right hand side, what do you get? You're going to get negative 1 t to the negative 2, right? Okay. What does this mean? It means because it's a partial derivative, you will not be applying the product rule. All you'll be doing is you'll be treating x as a constant and be treating this t actually as the variable. So if you differentiate e to the negative t, just imagine e to the negative 2t. If you differentiate this, what do you get? Well, this negative 2 comes down here and then you have e to the negative 2t. That's how you do differentiation. So when we differentiate this, what do we get? We get this integral, 0 to infinity. We're going to have negative x e to the negative tx dx. But on this side, what do we have? If we write this, it's going to be negative 1 over t squared. Negative 1 over t squared. That's it. I'm going to get greedy. I'm going to try to do it one more time. So let's take the derivative one more time with respect to t, okay? I don't need to explain anymore, I already explained here. So watch this. We're going to have the, another derivative from 0 to If I differentiate this again with respect to t, you see this negative x is coming again to multiply this. So we're going to end up with just x, which will be x squared, e to the negative tx dx. But when we differentiate this side one more time, hey, it's going to be t negative t to the negative 2. If you differentiate this one more time, it's going to be negative 2 times negative 1, right? And then t to the negative 3. So it's going to be negative, negative 2 times negative 1 is just going to be 1. So it's going to be 1 
times 2. I want to keep this 1 times 2 so that we can see what's going on, and then this would be t raised to power 3. Something is beginning to show up. Pay attention to the power here. The exponent here is 1. The, exponent, the number here is 1. The number here is 2. When this exponent has changed to 2, this has become 1 times 2, and this is just 1 more than this. If I do this one more time, do I have space for that? Let's do one more. If I differentiate both sides one more time with respect to t using the same rule, what's going to happen is this negative x is going to come back and multiply this. It becomes negative x cubed. Okay, so I have the integral from 0 to infinity of negative x cubed, and then I have e to the negative tx, e to the negative tx dx. And if I differentiate this one more time, oh, we have to write this in a nice way so we can understand. So this is 2, this is the same thing as 2, t to the negative 3. If we multiply to be negative 6, which is negative 2 times 3 over t to the fourth. There's a pattern now. Do you see that? The first one had a negative. The second one has no negative. Suddenly the third one, the negative comes back, but you're having, in fact, I can write this negative as negative one times two times three. We're developing the factorial. That's what I want you to see. And this is t to the fourth. So what we have is gonna be negative one times two times three over t to the fourth. As you may have already anticipated, if I continue differentiating, we're going to develop a pattern. And what's going to happen is that here I'm going to get this. The integral from 0 to infinity, the negative one will keep showing up and keep disappearing. Show up, disappear. Show up, disappear. Show up. By the time I take it again, this negative will cancel this negative. So it's like an alternating negative one. So it's going to be something like negative 1 that depends on what n is. When n is even, it's going to disappear. When n is odd, it's going to show up. So we took care of this minus. And then the x that's here is going to depend on the number of times that I've differentiated. Right? And we're going to have e to the negative tx dx. This is what's always going to be on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, this pattern is going to keep building. What's going to happen is, this is now the right-hand side, I'm going to have this minus sign, the way it's behaving here is the way it's behaving on that side too, right? So it's going to be negative 1 raised to power n. But I'm going to have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. It will keep going 1 times 2 times 3, top, 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 like that. You keep multiplying until you get to n. Does anybody know what we call this? Yeah, that was the illegal move I made in the last video. This is n factorial. So what we're going to get is negative 1 to the n times n factorial. That's what's going to be on top. And under is always going to be something bigger than what n is. So when this is 3, this is 4. So when I have n here, I'm going to have t raised to power n plus 1. So in summary, what I'm going to have here is going to be n factorial over t to the n plus 1. That's what I get on the right-hand side. Okay, so if I put the equal sign, let's just put it here. I, this has this, this has this. I can take this out. I can take this out. And that's it. That's it. I don't want this guy here. I just want to keep this n factorial because I want to define n factorial as an integral. So, how do I get rid of this? You know, I want to do one thing first. Instead of me writing n plus 1, I'm going to introduce another variable just to make this very simple. Okay? So, I'm going to make, let's say, look at this. Let, let's say z 
be equal to n plus 1. So what would n be? I want to replace this n here. Tap, 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 tap. It's going to be z minus 1 equals n. Okay, so we can say z minus 1 is equal to n. So I can rewrite what we have here in terms of z. Now, in another video, I'm going to talk about z and the whole what you can do with a gamma function. But right now, let's just write the formula nicely the way it is presented. This is good too, okay, if you want to go with this, but let's just, let's do something. Okay, so what do we have? We're going to have the integral um, from zero to infinity of x to the, instead of n, I'm going to write z minus one e to the negative tx dx will be equal to, what did we say n was? n is going to be z minus 1 factorial, z minus 1 factorial over t to the z. Nice. Da -da 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 Let's go. <laughs> now, I can do what I want. Remember what I said at the beginning? That I didn't want this to be x times x because I just wanted to bring in another variable or whatever I call it. Yes. So now I'm going to say t is equal to 1. I can just make t equal to 1. Let's see what happens when t becomes 1. When t becomes 1, this is going to be 1 raised to power z, and this is going to be t times x, which is just x. So if we say t equals 1, see what happens. From 0 to infinity of x to the z minus 1 e to the negative x dx is equal to 1 raised to power z is 1, and what you have left here is just z minus 1 factorial. Okay, I hope you know this is z. Beautiful. This is what you call the gamma function. So we say that the gamma of z, or we say gamma z, like some people say, is just z minus 1 factorial. So you can easily plug in whatever z is that you're trying to calculate into this integral and you get your answer. So this is the gamma function. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.